Good morning, this is Cody Hendricks, and today we're going to be looking at how we can do math with Java. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the basic vocab we have to work on while we do this. Um, just in case you haven't used your math vocabulary in a while, we have two vocab words you have to make sure we understand when we're working with Java. We have the operand and operator, and the operand is just the value or the variable that we're working with. So 3.24, negative 5006, false are the samples that are given below, or any variable that can hold those values as well. The operator is the symbol that we're using to perform that action. And so the operator, well, most of the time, is going to be a simple symbol like the plus sign, the addition sign, and the F. The operator is most of the time going to be a regular symbol that we use in regular arithmetic on paper, which is the um, a correct uh, version that we'll be using on a keyboard, since obviously we can't have a cute little um, dot, line, dot thing. Eh, no. So we've got that right here with the division of the regular forward slash. The first thing that I want to look at are the integer types. The integer types are the ones that we are going to be using to do most of the basic arithmetic um, that we do inside computer science, especially in AP computer science. We are going to be using the integer type as actually doing the counting of values. Now, we have three integer types. We have short, int, and long. Now, shorts exist. They're, they're there, but don't use them. They're basically too short to be used for anything really valuable 99% of the time, unless you're really, really concerned about memory storage and a very tiny range of values. Use an int. It's standard, it's easier to read, and it makes for better code in the long run. Um, Init type is the main one we'll be using. As you can see right here, it has the range of plus or minus 2 billion. Now, if you're going to be counting something in a computer science application, it's going to be in the range of plus or minus 2 billion. That's, that's the way it is. I mean, counting things, I mean, if you're counting one a second, you're not going to get a billion anyway, so don't worry about it. But we have a value right here, as you can see, of negative um, 2 billion, 147 million, 483 thousand, 648 two, the same value, minus 1. The reason we have that minus 1 in there is because of the magic power of 2's complement. Because when we're looking at how we can actually store values in a binary system, we have to find some way of storing that negative um, value. And the way we do that is by taking away the greatest possible max positive value and using that single um, bit to denote that it's a negative. If you want more information, go ahead and Google 2's complement. Lots of good stuff on there. On the long approach, we have an even wider range, aka plus or minus 2 to the 63rd power. Uh, as you can see, that's way too big of a number to bother saying. However, this number is amazing for dealing with Unix time. Oh, yeah, we have to actually keep track of time on a machine. And Fibonacci values. And you can see that later on. Now, we also have real values, aka numbers that have a dot. Now, we have the float and the double. Now, most operations that we'll be doing inside the AP subset will use the double value. Float does exist, and you can actually specify float by adding an F at the end of any um, Fra uh, fractional or real value, aka value with a decimal on it. But a double value is more often what you'll be using. It's what we use in the AP exam. And having, again, a good, simply a standard, oh, I'm going to be using this range of values makes it really easy to do. So that's why I always use a double value for my code. Um, when we're talking about real values with Java for double value, we have an 8 bit, I, we have an 8 byte value. So we have a lot of numeric storage capacity. We have 15 digits of precision, also quite nice. And we also have to cover the range of plus or minus 2 to the 10 to the 3808 power. 10 to the 308th power, 10 to the 308th power. So we have a 10 with 308 zeros. That's a very large number. I mean, if you're gonna write that on the board or on your paper, not a good idea. It's gonna, it's, I mean, you're, you're writing too many zeros to broadly with. But you also have the real small, it's even deal that the number of atoms in the universe is only about 10 to the 82nd power-ish. And we now have a, a range of counting stuff that's 10 to the 308th. Oh, yeah, we're, we're way big that. But we'll talk about that more later. Um, however, one of the really powerful things that we see with a double value is dividing by zero, not a problem. Now, you divide by zero in regular integer math, you get that weird, you know, going positive infinity, negative infinity at the same time, and I, I can't handle this, it's just it's going to break my computer. <laughs> it makes an uh, integer uh, divide by zero exception, your app crashes. Not what we want to see. But with a, a double division, we get not a number, NAND. Because with the representation of both positive and negative infinity at the same time. Pretty cool. And also, if you go out of bounds, you get no exception thrown. You get infinity and negative infinity. Because the idea that with a double, it's like we, we're already dealing with numbers that are ridiculously huge, that are greater than the number of atoms in the universe. So let's wake away of handling things that are beyond huge. And so we have a concept of infinity that we can use inside Java as well. And so you can use really cool stuff with that. Um, however, we do have overflow, and overflow is when you um, pour into the bucket a bit too much. 
Now, the bucket itself can be a positive number bucket, or it can be the amount met the power of a negative number bucket. Now, you, you can subtract too much from something. I know, it seems a little weird, but you can do it. Um, with integer um, overflow, if you go beyond the direct range of either positive or negative, and this is all for short, int, and long, it's going to wrap around in the other direction. So if you subtract from integer.min value, you get in the extremely huge number range. If you add to integer.max value, you get the ultra microscopically negative. However, with real numbers in double, it gets a little bit more squishy. Uh, double min value max value are right there. But when you break the bounds, it's a little different. Let's go take a look. So as you can see right here with the example of overflow, um, as we have overflow integer at min value minus 10, so the smallest possible integer value, and minus 10 gives me 2,147,483,638. That's a positive number, because minus, no, no uh, yeah. But integer dot max value plus 10, so the biggest possible value is negative 2,147,483,638. 639. Yeah, overflow. We, we, we poured so much in the bucket that it flips the bucket over and goes in the other direction. Yeah, kind of weird, but that's okay. Now, doubles were pretty good. Uh, double dot min value, 4.9 times 10 to the 324th negative. Okay, that's really tiny. Uh, double dot max value, 1.79 times 10 to the 308th. Yeah, um, that's ridiculously huge. Okay, great. Now, double dot max value minus double dot max value, zero. No, oh, double dot min value minus double dot min value, zero. Okay. But here's the squishy stuff. Double dot min value minus one million. Negative one million. The smallest possible value minus a million is negative a million. Yeah, squishy. The, small, the largest possible double value plus one million is the largest possible value. Biggest thing plus one million is still the biggest thing. Okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. Double dot max value plus double dot max value, infinity. Okay. Double dot min value plus double dot min value. One <coughs> times 10 to the negative 323rd. I, yeah. How about double dot max value plus double dot min value? Double dot max value. A little squishy. So when you're talking about overflow, stick with integers. It makes a lot more sense and it's very predictable. Overflow on the double side, uh, mm, yeah. However, when we get to Java, we also have the magic power of PEMDAS. However, notice on the PEMDAS right here, there's an extra M right here in the middle of the screen. Extra M, what? Oh, we have, in regular PEMDAS, it's a parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. But this is PEMDAS plus. We have to add the uh, regular friends, okay, that's good. We use those all the time in Java. Exponentiation is going to handle via math class. Okay, great, well, no big deal. But in computer science, we have to go back to modulus. Now, modulus we've actually covered and learned way back in third grade when you talk about long division. However, in long division, when you had that little remainder thing that you were, were oh, crap, I've got this, this, this value that's sitting off to the side that I don't know what to do with. No, no, no. In, in computer science, we actually care about the modulus, but we don't care about the answer. So we're going to do all that long division, and then we're going to ignore the answer completely. Yes. Um, now, one of the really cool things, though, is you can also use modulus on doubles. So you divide a double into a double, and you have a remainder double. I know, but it works. Now, we have a few additional operators to go on top of that, because this is PEMDAS plus. So we have the negation operator. We're going to invert values, and we can see DeBergen's law for more complex operations. The relational operators that you've already been using back in math with greater than, less than, or equal, greater than, equal to, less than, or equal to. No big deal, just like elementary. The equality operators that we use for integer values and Boolean values only of equals equals, as well as not equals, we can also work with null. And we don't use those ever with real values. We'll talk more another time. Boolean logic with and and or. Now let's talk about logical negation. Logical negation is the not operator. We're gonna take a true value, turn it to false, or a false value and turn it to true. However, a logical negation, the not symbol can also invert the direction and the exclusivity of a relational operator. So if you have a less than operator, it turns into greater than or equal to. A greater than turns into less than or equal to, so it goes from exclusive to inclusive, but facing the other way. 
the greater than or equal to turns to less than only. So it goes from exclusive to, or for inclusive over to exclusive. And the same with there. It also inverts the equality operator from equals equals to, as, all right, not equals. Pretty basic. The relational operators, aka the alligators eat the bigger number. Now, remember we have the exclusive values of greater than or less than, but we also have the inclusive. Now, remember, when we're working with the inclusive values, we have the greater than symbol or the less than symbol first, and then the equal sign. It's not equals greater, it's greater than or equals. So make sure you write that down when you're actually doing your header in code and typing as well. Otherwise, your compiler is going to go, and it's going to be really confused, and we don't need to add a confusion to the computer because it's not as smart as you are already. Our equality operators, equals equals means the same, not equals means different. This only works for ints, booleans, and chars only, okay? Now, ints and booleans are really the basic ones you're going to be using it on the most, but you can throw char in there if you really have to because char is really just a wrapper for an int, but meh. Now, doubles do not work. When we're talking about a double value or a float value, we have that huge, massive range of values, but we only have specification of max 15 uh, bits of, or 15 digits of information and beyond that range. When the entire 10 to 308 storage and the entire um, 8 bytes of storage are attached to that thing, we have no idea whatsoever what is stored inside that variable. And so we can't assume that even though I said double mine equals 2.0, double yours equals 2.0, the first two digits, yeah, 2.0, those are the same. Beyond that, uh, no, they don't work. We have no guaranteed knowledge what's stored inside that because those are values are assigned at that point and the stuff that's stored after that, that zeroth point on the decimal, we really don't know, so we can't use an equals equals on that. So never use equals equals when you're talking about comparison of doubles or floats. Now, objects also, we never want to use the equals equals operator unless they're the exact same instance. A great example for this for in the real world are human beings, twins, triplets, quadruplets, okay? They have the same DNA, but they're not the same people. They're actually different, I know. Now, we can also use the equals equals operator and the not equals operator against null. And that is fantastic for user or network or file-based value because we don't know that they're actually there. So we compare that first and then we do other tests, which allows like, oh, did the user actually type into the field? And then did we actually then check to see if it's the right value? Because we want to make sure there's something in there first before we actually go and do tests. And so we can also use the equals equals for null. But that's what we're going to work with that for objects is just make sure it's not null. Boolean logic. And um, Boolean logic. The ampersand ampersand, the thing I can't write. So there's the ampersand in this font. Ampersands look different in every single font on the planet anyway, but you put two of them together and it means and. And with an and operation, all the components with an and must be true. So this and that, both of those two, they all have to be true. So and and all, they both have three letters. They both start with A and all. Use that lovely mnemonic, it makes it easier to do. The pipe key, pipe key, that's the one that's um, in a Mac keyboard is above the enter key, below the delete key, to the right of the squiggle, okay? Pipe key, it's used in um, Windows never, but it's used in Mac and um, Linux processing all the time. But the pipe key, pipe key means or. Or means one of the components have to be true. It doesn't matter which one. So this or that. Now, to look at the Boolean logic and all the uh, evaluations of Boolean logic, it's a full other lecture on itself, but it doesn't matter which of those ones or operators are, as long as one is. However, we also have De Morgan's Law. De Morgan's Law is a really cool thing of simplification of Boolean operations. And so we have not some Boolean or some other Boolean becomes not some Boolean and not some other Boolean. <coughs> and so we can distribute the not across an operation. It works just like by multiplying negative one in a regular arithmetic expression. Whole new thing that you can actually talk about. I know there's YouTube videos, I think I might even done one myself, about the De Morgan's Law, but it's basically how you can distribute not operations across entire sequences and do more complex and very powerful operations of how to do logic. Take a look at that and make sure you practice it for the AP exam as well. Now we have here, right, a simplified Java order of operations. I did take out a couple lines because I hate them and I don't want ever, my students to ever use them, but we have some basic stuff here right here. So we have our postfix operations of plus plus and minus minus. Hey, we've used those all the time. The unary operation of not, that happens first. Then we have our multiplicative, so we have times, divide, and modulo, the additive, plus and minus, our relational operators we just talked about with the alligators eating some values, then we have our equality operators, our logical and, logical or, and then we have the ternary assignment operator. I have a quick little explanation right there, but I'm not going to go into it at all. And then we have our regular assignment operators, where you've used them probably quite a bit with equals and plus equals a lot. But we also have some other ones we can use with that. We have, however, some really cool functions that we can use inside Java, which are the math dot, uh, <coughs> 
We have some really cool operations we can use inside the, in Java, which is the math class. Now, the math class is a static uh, method class, which means we don't make an instance of it. We just do math dot whatever method. Or if you want to do a static import, you can do that too. So we have the AP subset, the ones I want to make sure I talk about first. We have some other subsets we'll be looking at as well. So the first thing we have in the AP subset are abs and abs. Now, if you take your hands and you make a little that and you touch your abs, it looks like the absolute value graph. I know, bad joke, but it's amazing. So this is an overload method work with both int and double. And so whatever a value you place inside the abs function will come back as the absolute value. So a positive value of that. Great for doing some um, calculations and making sure you're doing something to make sure, like say for example, range of the values to use for that. Math.pow. Now math.pow is how we do an exponentiation like we were talking about at the very beginning of this lecture where I want to get the exponent of something. The first parameter is a double, second parameter is also a double. So I want to take the first parameter to the second parameter's power. So math.pow2,3 would be the cubed value of 2. Math.squirt. Now, squirt. I'm not talking about cute little tiny things or squishing a little squirt gun. Math.squirt is the square root. This goes back to the old, um, we don't have enough letters to spell things, so we're going to take out all the vowels. But math.squirt is how you get a square root of a value. It takes a single double as a parameter and returns, of course, a double as well. And then my personal favorite, math.random. Now, math.random, as you know, it takes no parameters. It simply returns a value from 0 inclusive to 1 exclusive. So we have a double value somewhere in that range of 0 up to but not including 1. We can then use some magic conversion and casting to get some range and scale of values. Math, um, you want to make sure that you practice with math.random a lot because it's a really powerful tool and you can do it to do all sorts of cool fun things inside your programs that you want to make. Trigonometry. Now, this may not be your favorite math class that you've ever had. However, the trigonometric functions inside the math class really make things really nice. And so you can build your nice little calculator that you want to use to solve all your math problems that you have to do already, or make it so you do some really cool things like differential equations. So in the math um, class area, we have the uh, trigonometric operations with sine, arc sine, cosine, a cosine, tan, and a tan. And those work just like they regularly do inside your trig class. However, we also have a tan 2. a tan 2 returns the theta value of the arctangent, which is really great if you want to say, for example, calculate the trajectory of a bullet and use that inside a game. Hint, hint. Uh, hypotenuse. Now, for some bizarre reason, inside math, you have to calculate the value of hypotenuse on a regular occasion. So the hypot function takes two double values, squares them, and does the regular, oh, x squared plus y squared equals b squared. You know that little Pythagorean theorem thingy? Yeah, that's what takes care of that for you right there. Um, we have two degrees and two radians, so you have to convert values, something you would really have to do all the time inside regular things, especially if you're doing, say, for example, working with different um, types of functions that want, oh, this type of thing, if you want to make your robot drive in this direction for, say, for example, your first robotics competition, it wants radians for some reason. The two radians function will give you that value, so you can pass in a, a degree, and it'll give you the radians value. Yeah. Now, we also have some adjustment values inside the math class. Math.floor, math.seal. These will give you the take a double value and it gets you the up to the next value. So math.floor will take you down to the bottom value. Math.seal gives you the next value. So 3.9 becomes 4 and 3.9 with, uh, with the seal becomes floor and 3.9 with a floor becomes 3. So whoop or whoop. Nice way to see what would be the value of say, for example, you're going to do a round operation or if you want to do a convert to an um, integer. We also have the two logarithmic functions, log and log base 10. So these are great if you're, say, for example, again, working on your calculus projects and need to make sure you do your stuff. Log and log base 10 can make your life really nice. We have, however, another set of really cool things, the comparison operations. These are great for when you want to do, say, for example, some relationship or see if what joint is bigger or um, smaller and do that over time. And so you have math.max and math.min. These are overloaded to work with all the um, numeric data types. So short, even, um, double, long, float, in, yeah, all that. So you have math.max, math.min, and it will return the greater of the two values. And you can chain these together. If you want to take a good look at that, look at the trio question on the AP exam a couple years ago. Great way you can actually use math.max and math.min to solve some great problems. That's all we have for today. Hope you have a great day, and enjoy practicing with your job and doing some math in it. Enjoy.